Ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids across our beloved empire. If you're watching this video today, that means you have taken your first steps into the great nerf of 2021. You are going to try to persevere and survive, adapt to what is coming in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes after many of our loved ones like Darth Vader will be fallen victim to the great nerf please join with me in the name of the whales krakens and holy r and jesus today we need to talk about a lot of concerns because i am very worried about the future of star wars galaxies i have a lot of commonly asked questions in regards to what is going to happen in x y or z part of the game conquest grand arena territory Wars, squad arena new players coming to the game long story short we gotta wait and see but more importantly this is going to go more in depth on my concern so cg i know you're watching out there you want to get all this intel because if we're going to make it to the future this long future of a healthy meta we got to make sure a variety of these areas get addressed sometime in the future but another thing that has to get addressed i'm getting intel that larry says we got a sponsor coming in larry hit us hey kid come here do you like free-to-play hero collector games that have amazing graphics, hundreds of characters to collect, millions of players? Well, then let me introduce you to our sponsor today, Raid Shadow Legends. I mean, don't just take my word for it. Look at how much Barry loves Raid Shadow Legends. And one of his absolute favorite things about Raid Shadow Legends is the immersive storytelling. What I thought we'd do today is talk about one of my favorite factions, the Banner Lords. Feel free to use the links down below in the video description to download the game and get some awesome new play rewards. They were the founding members of an alliance between the Sacred Order, High Elves, Barbarians to push back the forces of evil. When we meet them, it seems they've lost their way and they're launching wars against their old allies is it true well you're gonna have to play raid shadow legends to find out because they've just released five new amazing characters and they also have a non-stop schedule of summer events and activities such as fusion events to get brand new legendary champions tournaments against other players i have another great champion that you can get for free if you scan my qr code or go to the links down below in the video description and if you're a new player you'll be getting an epic hero Chonaru, 200,000 silver, one XP booster, one energy refill, and one ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you right up here, but you gotta be quick because these rewards are only available for the next 30 days. So we got way too much to talk about in a short period of time. The moral of the story is you guys heard my review of the road ahead that we got, or the roadblock ahead, I should say, or the whale ahead that we did guard the top of right hand corner. I am very concerned for the health and future of this game. What I'm hoping is best case scenario, just like when relics came to the game, gear 13 came to the game, mods came to the game. A lot of people weren't a fan of it. A lot of us stuck through it. Some of us left. My only hope is that moving forward, we're gonna say, ah, you know, we made it through. Look at this new meta, we're, we're thriving. And that is the ideal and hopeful future of this game. But I am having a very difficult time understanding from the perspective of the developers how nerfing characters like Darth Vader, Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker, General Anakin Skywalker, Watt Tamborn, the list goes on and on, is meant to create a healthy meta for the future. As you know, these changes are mainly to help maintain their vision of Galactic Legends, shore GL at the top of the line, and then treat GLs more like raid bosses. So they're trying to give themselves breathing room for the future to ensure that they can create creative characters without stepping on the toes of Galactic Legends. Again, in the present moment, I cannot understand how that future is going to look like and if this is necessary, but hopefully these changes do allow the game to prosper for years to come. But what I really want to talk about today are kind of the concerns that have kind of shored up over this weekend. As a result of this news, there are more questions than answers going on right now. The first area I want to talk about is really Grand Arena slash territory wars this is by far one of the most popular questions i've been getting we'll talk about conquest get to some more of the new player stuff hey and you know what i'll even show you my next zeta we're getting on the free to play account later on today first up grand arena by far the most popular question i got how is this going to affect the grand arena meta well in the words of cg they're trying to ensure that galactic legends distance themselves more from non-gls and it's really seeming like this future meta is going to be galactic legends versus galactic legends only we don't know if that is going to be a hundred percent the case we know the most popular counters of things like thrawn vader jedi knight luke skywalker list goes on and on are getting nerfed. however we do have some other counters that are kind of cheesy 
And it's going to be very weird if they survive. And I got to give a massive, a massive, massive shout out to GWG, who posted a nice little infographic on Reddit that shows in general what are the counters that exist to the variety of Galactic Legends. For example, Supreme Leader Kyle Ren, they're trying to show what is the impact of these upcoming changes. Brother, for example, we don't know how is the Bastlashan Jedi Luke trick going to work. Is that going to still be a viable thing? They're thinking that Jedi Knight Revan with Jedi Knight Luke might still be a viable thing again i think right now it's more questions than answers this might be a decent assumption to be had there might be a chance that things like this on it might still be able to beat these galactic legends unless they really bolster up the galactic legends viability even more and tune down a lot of the characters like who knows maybe they'll prevent marks from happening on galactic legends moving forward it's hard to say we do have some exceptions in the game right now but some other popular examples like uh treya darth vader thrawn darth vader oh look at that gary look he made it into the infographic baby one of my favorite supreme little cow encounters you can really see what's going to be dead and what this user thinks to be viable but the main thing i want to point out is this right here captain rex fives echo arc trooper and barris that is uh, assuming there are no other changes things like that could still be a viable option and it's going to be a really oxymoronic if they're going to prevent darth vader thrawn and Watt, some of the best characters in the game to not be a viable galactic legends counter but they're going to allow a non-legendary cheese team to beat supreme leader kylo ren what is the new policy moving forward cg is it if you're a non-galactic legend team beating a galactic legend team we're going to nerf you we're going to fix you we don't know, but I'm trying to give a glimmer of hope. Assuming that there are no other caveats or changes happening, we might still exist in a grand arena and territory war meta, but there's where there still might be off the beaten path, non-galactic legends counters and things like Captain Rex might be our savior. There's a couple other tabs I'll quickly go through and look at this. Ray might be getting some of the best changes because a lot of these nerfs to Thrawn, Luke, Vader really are going to benefit ray look at all these alleged dead non-galactic legend counter teams and they're saying this is viable i'm not really seeing that being a viable thing not a very consistent team out there i have seen it being pulled up once or twice but as you see in terms of this ray is going to become even more of a menace on divas pretty much begging that we're going to need a galactic legend for something like her jedi master luke skywalker lots of dead counters Wat tambor with darth uh, revan again we have to wait and see this is just their opinion their assumption who knows maybe we'll still be able to get things like Wat tambor and revan to still do her thrawn was not necessarily needed the counter jedi master luke skywalker so this team might still be semi-viable because uh Sith, uh what's the name darth revan oh my gosh she's gonna hate me for that one is get able to get tons of determiner and constantly apply fear on the entire team so again a lot more questions than answers happening right now but the point i want to put out there is that in grand arena there might be a slight chance we don't have to worry about solely galactic legends fighting galactic legends and that is going to be best case scenario but again cg needs to clarify a lot of things and secondly in regards to grand arena the meta that is what is going to happen if let's say we do exist in a world where only galactic legends can beat galactic legends is there a plan from cg well i guess the somewhat good news is that they have responded saying they're going to be keeping an eye on the grand arena matchmaking after these changes moving forward because on paper if they really want galactic legends to be untouched by non-galactic legends there are some matches where someone will have more galactic legends than you how will that affect you well there is still a strategic element to all this grand arena matchmaking more or less kind of puts people within the rough gp the rough rosters together but there are some times someone's gonna have more gls than you well there's kind of a situation a strategic situation to keep in mind here if someone puts their galactic legend on defense they're really limiting themselves on offense and if you some of the uh, bro, broader roster with maybe more legendaries can put a decent defense together you might still trip up a galactic legend opponent. yeah maybe you can't full clear that galactic legend but there are still ways to slow down galactic legend owners are multiple galactic legend owners again trying to take an optimistic take even if they do not change matchmaking we still might find ways to just trip up opponents by making sure you're efficient with which zones you claim which zones you dominate on the defensive end and make sure you trip up your opponent and if they save their gl for offense that makes the offensive run easier for you then so there still might be hope that grand arena will be fine but i'm hoping that they try to make sure if this is only going to be a gl versus gl future they try to ensure the matchmaking takes that in, into consideration if really there is no alternative to this whole entire situation that really comes into the next part of the grand arena meta. what about the situation where you're going up against an opponent with all gls and there are no non-galactic legends it's, it's becoming a very we're trying to predict the future right now 
there's gonna be enter there's gonna be this prisoner's dilemma situation and if you don't know what i mean here's a fantastic example right here there's a situation where you got two individuals paired up against each other and there's four possible outcomes in this alleged situation right here we have two prisoners and you know they're in separate rooms and the investigator is like hey if you bail if you rat out your buddy i'll let you off the hook and he tells the same thing to the other guy in the other room that's in trouble well looking at the situation here if they both stay silent they're both only going to serve one year if one person uh, rats out the other person number two is going to go to jail for three years while the first person's going to go home free and the inverse situation can happen if person number one rats out person number two a is going to go free b is going to serve three years but if they both rat each other out they're both going to serve two years so there's going to be this equilibrium potentially where if someone is going to put too many teams on defense and the other has more on offense the person with more on offense is going to be likely to win it seems like it might be in a situation where the equilibrium as of now with the future lord vader coming into the picture three gls for offense three gls for defense seems to be what this prisoner's dilemma the equilibrium might be sometime down the road and it just might be a matter of efficiency winning by a few banners playing a little bit better than your opponents and this is especially going to be true for territories where you have less style points as i like to call them. there's not a lot of health protection banners you got to make sure you're extremely efficient in territories so i think territories is going to be a lot more grindy in terms of banner pinching moving forward than grand arena so again there is no clear answer right now but there are several concerns in regards to what's the match we can go to look like will we still have non-gl counters available to us in the future even after these changes and other things like well what's going to happen in a gl versus gl situation and zero gls versus the gl situation so we got to wait in the depth trying to give a little bit of optimism out there for the future of the grand arena matchmaking what i am least hoping for let's move on to the next conversation point here we spent a lot of time talking about grand arena oh, i just I, i'm still just having a hard time wrap my mind around this future of grand arena and just the meta in general how this is healthy if this is really gonna allow the game to survive for years to come and we're here five ten years later hey you know what maybe it's worth it in the end but as of now it really sucks i think squad arena is gonna be the area where it's gonna really suck the most if you don't have a gl of your own it might be very difficult to climb a lot of people have been climbing of things like darth vader jedi Knight revan and so forth again we have to wait and see if these non-gl teams will hold up to these galactic legends out there but as of now if the developers intentions are entirely true they, they don't really want gls to be messed around by these peasant characters in the game i think squadron is going to be the area where you're going to probably feel the pain the very most next area conquest this is really what i'm very concerned about now i'm going to say this i'm assuming we're going to be fine in conquest because again although they're buffing these galactic legends inside of the game I have a feeling with Conquest, you get all these data discs. You're creating some supercharged team. I'm assuming that can still beat these Galactic Legends teams, especially since this is not in a PvP format, a Grand Arena, Territory War, Squad already, uh, Arena format. So Conquest, CG, I'm hoping you're hearing this part of the video. Please don't make Conquest unbearable for people without Galactic Legends. If you do want this Galactic Legend must be Galactic Legend rule, I'm hoping that applies outside of Conquest because there's been a lot of people who got Commander Tano, for example, with zero Galactic Legends in their account because they're efficient with their roster and they got good data this they were able to get maximum crates. But if moving forward, if they don't want GLs to be countered by things like Darth Vader and whatnot, even with data this that is a bold and horrible move in my example. You should be rewarding players for going against the odds of no Galactic Legends and defeating GLs, not the other way around. I understand you got to keep the value of a galactic legend but this is conquest we need to ensure that people can still beat conquest even without galactic legends this is honestly my biggest area of concern a lot of question marks right now it's up in the air but i'm hoping and i'm gonna stay optimistic that these changes won't really affect conquest that much this actually goes to another question i forgot to mention at the beginning of the video in regards to events journey guide events general anakin skywalker although getting nerfed in the galactic legends counter category in the non-gl categories i like to call it the peasant rock paper scissors tournament he is getting a buff how is this going to affect things like this event because if general skywalker is getting buffed and these changes are going to affect his events on cash on camino this event is going to become so much more difficult every single guide out there on the internet on the forums on reddit is going to be completely irrelevant and outdated because he is going to recover a ton more protection when he's undercover and then when you take out all the clone troopers he'll immediately 
get 100% protection recovery, even if he had 0% protection. So CG, we need some, we need answers to these questions in some sort of forum Q&A so you can answer these variety of areas in the game. Here we talked a little about Territory Wars. The last area I really, really want to talk about here is the free to play, or not necessarily free to play, but beginner new player accounts. A lot of people are chasing a variety of paths. There are GL farming guides, there are non-GL farming guides. There's a farming guide for everybody out there, depending on what you want to do in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. There is this assumption right now that if you are a newer player chasing after Galactic Legend like I am with Supreme Leader Kyle Ren, you're going to be at an advantage. We are still assuming that moving forward with these changes, they really don't want non-GLs countering GLs. So it would seem evident that if you're someone farming a Galactic Legend, you're going to be in a much better spot than people trying to avoid farming Galactic Legend. And they're trying to pick up all the other type of journey characters out there like Jedi Knight Revan, Darth Revan, Commander Luke. The list goes on and on and on. This point's going to kind of dive into what I mentioned earlier in our Grand Arena setting. Yes, people get massive against Galactic Legends, but there are still strategic moves you can make that try to ensure if you have no Galactic Legends, you can still probably beat other Galactic Legends players. Even if they place their one GL on defense that you don't have, if you're going to suspect that you can put a harder defense together, trip them up and still get a win based on efficiency and making sure you place the defenses in the right zones that have the most points available that your opponent could potentially grab away from you. So as of now, people are asking, should I change course and go after a Galactic Legend? I would say stay on course. Do not make sudden changes to your farming guides if you're someone going after just the journey characters, not Galactic Legends characters. Stay on course. Let's see what the future holds because there is a window of opportunity where we could still survive what is moving forward? Yes, we won't be able to have as many GL, uh, non-GL counters. That is just a pure fact. That is this lovely graphic that we saw right here. There are not going to be as many uh, non-GL counters available for us. Look at that. Dead, 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 dead. But there are still strategic things that you can do, even if you're a, a person with less Galactic Legends in your roster. And actually, before we wrap up this video, up, I want to just do my next quick Zeta here. I've been having a lot of fun on this free-to-play account here. It makes me wonder if... Even though I didn't really care which path I took, I think Supreme Leader Kyron's a fun path to go down. I'm just wondering, eh, how's this gonna affect new players? And with this in mind, new players, CG, you're adding all this Relic 9 stuff. You're adding all these Galactic Legends in the game. I'm hoping you make a way for it to become easier for people if GLs are gonna be the future and a must-have in rosters. It would be great if you somehow make it easier for people to actually catch up on things like the gear crunch that we've been asking for years and years and years. Remember when you said Kyrotex is supposed to ease up the gear crunch? Well, we know that was a lie. Indeed. So as we wrap this video, the next thing on my account will be return fire on my first order storm Jeeper, pretty much wrapping up all of my necessary and likable Zetas for the first order facts. And we've been making some pretty good progress on our roster, closing in on our third and fourth gear 13 character. Woo! It's been a lot of fun. And let's hope that fun keeps going into the future. Again, I wish I had more answers from you, but mostly this video is meant to try to show up a lot of the concerns and questions that I've seen over this past weekend in comments, forums, Reddit, in my stream, CG. We got a big future ahead of us here. These next steps are incredibly important for this healthy game that you too want to keep this game going for a long, long time. That's gonna wrap up our video for today. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you feeling better after this weekend, letting the news settle in? Or you still got some concerns like me? Like we did enjoy the video, comment down below and all your beautiful thoughts. And <laughs> be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing because a lot of stuff is surely to come around the corner. And the most important thing is always remember, it's great to be in the empire today. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.